In this video, we're going to walk you through the steps you need to take before allowing the client to administer their medication. For a great guide and step-by-step -step instructions in your Hatch portal, you can go to Human Resources, the BHT Training Module, Add New, and click on Medication Processes. Here it's going to talk about medication times, how to log and document the medications when they're coming in from a, either a pharmacy or from a new intake. Also, we're going to talk about medication pass and step-by-step -step instructions to help them administer their medication. So this is a great resource for you and that can be found in the BHT module in the human resources section of your Hatch Compliance Portal. Now we're going to go to a quick video with Dr. Jill talking about the steps you need to take before helping a client administer their medication. Basically, just kind of background stuff and you guys already know all of this. I mean, technically, um, since we're not uh, dealing with everybody having a, a, like a nursing license or specific professional license or we're not a pharmacy or something like that, we have to adhere to very strict uh, federal state guidelines and so forth and how we administer medications. So we need to be very careful about following just a routine thing. And you find that the more you do it in a routine method and you just go through the same routine every single time, it just becomes second nature and then you don't have to worry about it. The most important part would be make sure you got the right patient. Um, you need to do it, uh, identify the patient in more than one way. We usually say two ways um, because it's, we have a John right now, you have John W, John A, John B, you know, we've got all these different uh, patients and you know, sometimes I mix them up too and you think you know them, but it's very important that we make sure we have the right clients, okay? So, um, as it says here, you want to make sure you have the right client first, so you've got them with you. You want to be a little bit away from the big chaos that's going on in the rest of the housing so that you're not, you know, being distracted back and forth and you know how that goes. If patients are talking to you nonstop and people are asking you questions and I get distracted all the time and if I don't <coughs> purposely bring my focus back, it's very easy to do the right, I mean, the wrong thing. And I've done it, and, and you know, and probably not the last time I will have done things like that, but you really need to focus on what you're doing and try and get that patient and focus on them and what you're doing with them and tell this other person, I'll get back with you in a minute, let me finish what I'm doing. So you get that patient kind of a little bit off by yourself if you can. Make sure that you identify them and you have the correct patient. And as you know, we have lots of patients with the same names or approximate same names. Um, lots of them look the same. You know, it's, it's very hard to uh, always know you've got the right one. Then you want to identify the medication. So um, there's a couple of things. Um, when you're identifying the medication, obviously you've got maybe five, six different medications. So you want to take you know, the bottle out and you're looking at it, you want to read the name, ibuprofen, and remember some things are, say, the generic name, some things have the brand name, and it can be tricky. And if you get um, confused because the generic name is in the computer, but you have a bottle with the other name, either stop for a minute, look it up, or um, you, know, you can ask your head of tech, your lead tech or something, but just make sure you have the right medication, many medications sound the same, especially lots of the psych meds. They end with the same ending, some of them all start with the same prefix, so you have to be a little bit careful. You identify the medication, so this is ibuprofen, uh, you know, it might have said Advil, it might have said um, Motrin, you know, there could have been some other names, but we're going to identify that it's the right medication. The right dose, so this one, for instance, <laughs> If I had my glasses on, I would see. It probably says, um, well, I don't know what it says. Um, 200 milligrams, uh, which is what it should be. Now, here, a little, a little FYI, and you guys have probably all fallen victim to this, that we may have ordered something, uh, and it's in Kip, you, you already know what I'm going to say, and then we changed our minds a week later and increased it or decreased it. So you have to be careful that you don't fall victim to that because it, it happens um, not infrequently that the dose has changed 
Um, now it you have the still have the bottle of ibuprofen, 200 milligrams, and this is an incorrect example. But now we ordered ibuprofen, 300 milligrams. So now make sure that you have got the right bottle because you might have a duplicate in there, but it's a slightly different dose or something. So make sure you've got the right medication, the right dose, um, the right route. For us, fortunately, almost everything's going to be by mouth. Um, you know, the exceptions, uh, anything that's injectable, you will not have there. We do that in the nursing office. Anything else is probably going to be topical. So a cream or an ointment, uh, and you um, want to make sure that you have the right thing. Uh, like I said, that happens infrequently. More sort of yeasty type things. You can have an oral dose and you can have a topical cream or something, but that will be few and far between. But you always want to make sure you've got the right route and then the right time and the right frequency. And this is something that also changes intermittently, so you have to be careful of. Most, most things will be once a day, twice a day, or three times a day. Infrequently, it'll be four times a day. Um, we have very specific times, which are approximately eight to nine in the morning, four, three, four in the afternoon, and then nine or 10 at night. Um, occasionally, we will change it if it's very important for some reason. Um, but most of the time, it's pretty standard. Um, when we put the orders in, if we say three times a day, it automatically prints out those times. So we have to really change it. We, there has to be some important reason for us to go in and change that. But um, within reason, you want to be pretty close to the time. Um, so you want to check that as well. Um, once again, not infrequently, something will be twice a day and then it gets changed to three times a day. So the bottle may say twice a day, but when you look in Kip you, you can say, oh, two days ago they changed it to three times a day. So you do have to be a little bit careful about that. Um, once again, uh, once you have identified all of that, even saying it out loud with the patient sitting there is a good idea. Um, they, they lots of times know uh, something about it, but not infrequently, they'll say, oh, no, no, you know, the doctor told me, no, I could take twice that amount now. So you gotta be, you got to be careful of that. We try very hard if we have said anything like that to update it. If we didn't, you got to go with what's in the computer. Um, that's, that's just the way it is. And you know they do that a lot. They all say, no, no, I talked to them today, and they said I could take 32 of those a day now. But um, so now you've got the right medication, you've got the right patient, you've got the right dose, you've got the right route, and the right time. So the now, medication uh, expiration, that's, that is a good thing to check. So now you're ready to give it, right? Yes. You always want to wash your hands, obviously. We're obviously wearing gloves right now. Um, make sure that if you're wearing gloves, you're not wearing them for 20 hours at a time, that we are changing them frequently. You can even, with your gloves on, put the hand sanitizer on and you wash your gloves, basically, with the hand sanitizer or alcohol, 80% or more. You can do that in between as well. Um, when you have bare hands, obviously, you want to wash them well and, uh, and, and or use hand sanitizer before you are handling any of these things. But there are quite a few medications that there's something you need to do before you give it. Um, most of the time, that's going to be check their blood pressure. That's the most frequent thing. So whatever it will say in KIPU, which it's <coughs> under two places in KIPU, notes and then, uh, what's the other thing say, warning? No, um, hmm. there's two slots. Um, and it will usually say, measure, uh, take their blood pressure first, uh, don't, don't administer if there's systolic blood pressure, so the top number is lower than 100, or the diastolic blood pressure with the bottom number is lower than 60 or it might be the opposite, you know, administer if the systolic is above 150 or the diastolic is above 90, something like that. The other thing would be a heart rate. If the heart rate falls below 60, don't administer the medication. So if that uh, happens to be one of the medications you have, you want to do the blood pressure, whatever it is, and then you document that in KIPU. There's, all, there's the little place in the med log where you document that. Then you can go ahead, as long as it's fallen within those parameters, now it's time to go ahead and give them the medication. So you're going to once again check in KIPU. Um, I think I have found that this is probably the number one medication mistake with administration um, when it's in housing. Um, and sometimes it's our fault and uh, sometimes 
it's just confusing because, as I said, the label might not be exactly what the patient's saying that they get or, or what somebody told you. So you always look and kit you. So you want to make sure that you check that they have allergies and you want to make sure that this is the order and this is the medication and this hasn't been changed since you remembered last night. They got two of them, but we changed it since last night. So you do want to look and keep you.